Bucket, please. <laughs> He's trying to get drunk. Let's get lit, fam. <laughs> that way you won't feel so bad when your parents die. Hey. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, Nolan. What did we just watch? Uh, Ruby. Uh, <laughs> chapter 10. The new Ruby. The new Ruby. Chapter was, 10. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, it was a very much focused on Teen Ranger, um, splitting the two. Yeah. Um, it feel like, um, felt that Ruby and John kind of were, they were at the, uh, Kuro Yuri. I think that was the, what the village was called. Yeah. Uh, pretty much just finding anyone impossible. And it was a perfect place for, uh, the creators to actually place the flashback for Ren. It's Chibi Ren. I love him. Trying to catch a fish? So it seems like something that um, Ruby and John still don't really know too much about, and just like it's just basically for the audience to get a feeling for, and to like strengthen their connection with like both Nora and um, Ren with them. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. And really, um, it actually wasn't too heavy on the flashbacks. I feel I feel like there was a good balance actually. It was like there was flashbacks, but they were needed. Like yeah. and. It was cool to see, like, the way that, uh, I guess, Nora and Ren, their relationship, how they kind of developed and all that. I, I'm really super happy, uh, although, dang, like, Ren, he's had a hard time. Some crazy dragon type, type of deal, or... Okay. That is not okay. That is mom is dead kinds of bad. Wow. That is you are now an orphan bad. That is... Oh my oh. god. Why? <laughs> but it's kind of interesting because of Ren's semblance, I guess, being emotion suppression. You gotta be a hero. Semblance. So what can he do? We have to be brave. Is this semblance courage? I hope so. That's awesome. That's the most broken one! I mean, the power to not be afraid, that's kind of really cool. And to make others not afraid, I guess. The grim, like, can sense fear and stuff. Yeah. So Ren can suppress emotions. Yeah. Is that it? That's definitely, like, the big question. It's like, what exactly is his semblance? I know when, um, it was... Volume one, it was Ruby. Uh, R Piero was explaining to John like what aura is. Everyone has aura, just kind of like how ninjas have chakra and everything. Yeah, and like you can actually utilize your aura, not like semblance, but like your aura to like um, sense things around you, the nature of things. And so I don't think that's what. Uh, well, that was definitely what Ren was showcasing in Volume One, just like to supplement what Piero was saying. But here, it was different. Like this is absolutely a semblance power. Yeah. I want to say it's courage. Like, I really just want to say it's just simply courage. Well, like, I I feel like, well, if it was emotion suppression, then, like, we could pretty easily say that, like, Ren, like, has been the thing sort of in the background since the last volume <laughs> that's been keeping his entire team from just falling apart in the wake huh. of Pyrrha's death. That's true, too. Like... Yeah, it's so interesting. Like, they they keep a lot of uh, semblance uh, powers kind of vague, except for a few. I mean, like, we pretty much just heard uh, Yang's um, semblance as well as Weiss's. And, I mean, you hear Pura say, like, oh, uh, Ruby, you got speed. That's really it. <laughs> and I guess a lot of them are self-explanatory, but some can be pretty obscure if you don't really know what they're, what it is, what it is. Yeah, like, true. Physically. But yeah, like, well, that interesting thing with, like, what Ren did to Nora, just to make sure that she didn't freak out as the, um, the Grim were just investigating the area. Yeah, it has to do with some kind of emotional, um, suppression, I guess. Because of the fact that Grim are, um, spurred by despair and just a whole bunch of negative emotions. I need to see more of that, uh, that Grim. What kind of Grim is this gonna be? Oh, what my to me, son. 
Well, maybe Yo. it's maybe it's courage actually. Or also that, yeah. Oh my Jesus! What that is might be the spookiest Grim we've seen. Yeah, right. Like, are they gonna do like some weird like four horsemen thing? With with that, because I mean that thing is that's really cool. It looks like a bundle of things. Like I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's like a Grim riding another Grim, or if it's just like that's the entire body and it's like a nuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's just got like the 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 body. The torso body, like, coming out of the horse, yeah. which is, like, it would be a nuck. But <laughs> yeah. um, I guess we're going to see more of that. Next episode. Next episode. That thing is going to that village where Ruby, John, and Crow are at. And we're just going to see some action. Um, it's still at uh, Chapter 10, so it's definitely not going to be a finale, I would say. At least I'd, I'd like to say. Wait, so is that is that Grim, like... Are Ren and Nora gonna fight it, or are John and Ruby gonna fight it? John and Ruby are gonna like do their best. They they definitely have Crow to consider. They're gonna be on the defense, pretty much as long as they can hold on to. And then uh, Nora and Ren are gonna show up, and then Team Ranger is going to somehow make make it through the fight. Crow's gonna die. <laughs> Crow is not in a good position at all. Either like, either Crow's gonna basically use the last of his life force to protect them against this this disgusting grim or they're going to fight it and then after they're done fighting it and they beat it he's going to he's going to die and there's going to be like the the moment that's where it's going to cut it's going to have a a cliffhanger where we're just to assume that crow is dead oh, it sucks i, I imagine it's going to be one of those <laughs> no. although a part of me kind of hopes that this is a grim that they can't beat. Yeah. And then it just wrecks them all. Yeah, but because then like who would who would save them? Or, or are they just destined to die in this in this part? Um, I wouldn't say die, but I mean, so far we haven't had a single grim. Like usually the biggest grim in the series so far, other than that dragon, um, has been they found a way to defeat it. Mm -hmm. Um and so I'm here I am thinking like we haven't seen a grim beat them yet. Yeah. I mean the, there was the dragon that was on the uh on the roof of Beacon, but yeah. I mean that thing got frozen. Like I mean they did sort of beat it. Kind of. But it's... yeah. This would be the first time that we would actually see like a character or characters get defeated by a grim and that might be actually pretty cool to see. I think if they do get defeated by this uh, Grim. Obviously, the Grim's going to still try to finish them off, but I think Ren might be able to help them out by suppressing whatever it is. We can see. So they'll just, like, they'll hide behind their... They're just going to run with their tails behind their legs. Or just, like, hide. And then, like, they're just in a worse condition now. They can't transport Crow or anything. And then whatever happens, they'll just have to rely on the rest of Team Ruby. Yeah. I mean, there's really no telling. I'm kind of hoping it's the whole, like... I'm kind of, honestly, as much as I would hate to see Crow die, like, I'd love to see Crow kind of give it his all one last time. Oh, my God. And, like, you know, as his way of saying, like, you know, I put my I put my faith in the next generation of Huntsmen. Wow. Yeah. Like, this, I'm going to give this all I got in mm -hmm. spite of the pain. Like, I love stuff like that. I would hate to see Crow die, but, like, what else can they do with him, you know? Yeah. And it also give uh, Ruby a reason to be motivated, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Although I think John did a really good job motivating Ruby at the end. Drag us along. He gave us the courage to follow you. Attaboy, John. So are they like, are we going to ship them now? Uh... Maybe next volume. Yeah. She goes, like, she was really... It's interesting, because Ruby has been, like, probably the most positive, actually, yeah. throughout. And that's saying, considering the fact that she's also very confused about the entire situation. I, I sort of wonder if there's ever going to be sort of... If, if Jean is ever going to be, like, a love interest, or if there is going to be a love interest. Because, like, they sort of messed around with that with Jean and Pira. Um... But I don't know, because it's just like, 
in, in in times of war, who has time for a relationship? So like, Truly. if they go that way with the writing, I perfectly am okay with it. I under, I totally understand why. But like, typically in in shows, there's at least like one sort of main love interest type thing going mm. on. So we'll see. Yeah. But then again, Ren and Nora, Nora are pretty close. Yeah, I love them. I love them so much. Yeah, now that I've seen like their their backstory, that's it's like that's not the entire. Well, it's enough. It's enough to feel connection with these two. Know what they've been through initially, and now we're sold with them. Like, yeah, yeah. Because initially with Ren, like he was that character that I know that Monty really loved, but I didn't really myself find like a connection with him at all. But he seeing was what, super boring for the first couple volumes. <laughs> yeah, but he's really uh, come to his own now. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like now, because we see his what his semblance is, that kind of almost excuses him for being boring for all the time that he's been boring, because that's just his ability is to be calm. Yeah. I guess something like that. Until we can really get a fix, or we can we just look it up on the wiki, whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going on like 30 minutes. So okay, and we gotta start a podcast soon. Actually. Yup. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hashtag bye. See ya. You here, don't I? That's too Aww. cute. That's too cute. Uh-huh. Aww.